This is Priya Akela and today we are going to discuss about our DBMS project which is CTA GTFS which is uh, Chicago Transit Authority and this uses uh, GTFS technology which is Gen General Transit Fleet Specification. So this defines a common format for public transportation schedules and associated geographic information. Uh, it is also used for inclusion in maps and direction specific services. Uh, these fields will allow public transit agency to, public, to publicize their uh, data and developers will write applications to ensure that the data is an interoperable way. Uh, GTFS, it consists of uh, several files uh, which will be discussed in the next few minutes. Uh, each file models a particular aspect of transit information, like you have the stops, the routes, the trips, and other schedule information. Uh, for our project, we have considered the green line of Chicago Transit Authority, so it starts from Harlem and it will end at Ash Line. So this is the line which we have considered. Now over to Archana, and she will be discussing about the data sets which I use for our project. Thank you. So this was the data that uh, GTF has provided us through their website, and this is the data, data that GTF has considered required for their uh, for the project. And for, for our project, given the scope that we're only taking the green line, we have made a few changes to this data, and uh, marked in the red bubble a few things which we are removing and we are cleaning from our data. So we're not considering agency because we're only using the green line, and we didn't require agency for that purpose. We are not going to use the root short names, the root long names. Also, we are not going to use the pickup type and drop off type since we are only using the train systems. So we removing the pickup types. Some of the other things we are changing is zone ID, stop URL since it's all based in Chicago transit. And here's the screenshot of all the tables we are using. So uh, we have seven tables in total, and the tables involve routes, trips, calendar, wheelchair, stop times, trips shapes, scheduled trips. So I'll just explain a few tables and Dharni will explain them in detail again. So give, coming to the shape ID, the shape ID contains the latitude and longitude of the, this one, of the train, the distance it has traveled, and then we have the service uh, calendar which gives us the service ID and the days of the week. So uh, Monday it's mentioned as zero for the particular service ID, that means that the train is not going to be functioning on that particular day. And then we have the wheelchair axis where uh, we have taken route ID and the wheelchair axis. So uh, again, one mentions that the particular stop has a wheelchair axis and zero mentions that the particular station does not have a wheelchair axis. And over to Dhani, who will explain the normalization process. Thank you, Archana. Now, uh, let's talk about normalization uh, of our project in detail. Um, as we all know, normalization is a process which uh, converts an ill-structured uh, data set into a well-structured one. Uh, it basically uh, eliminates insert, delete, and update anomalies. Um, so in our project, uh, the seven tables that we have used, um, let's talk about each ta table in detail. First, let's talk about the stop times table. Um, this particular table is already in the first normal form, uh, as in uh, we have all the composite and multivalid attributes are already removed, so we don't have to touch up on them. But, the, however, this particular table has uh, partial dependencies, so it's not in second normal form. So we have, um, for instance, we have removed the scheduled trip ID uh, from the main table because it depends only on the trip ID uh, primary key. However, this particular ta table has a stop ID, trip ID, and the arrival time as a composite primary key. So uh, we have removed that, that dependency. And um, since we have done that, uh, this and this uh, table, however, is already in the third normal form. So um, that's good. And then talking about the stops table, um, this particular table has transitive dependencies. So it's not in third normal form. So uh, here specifically, um, the wheelchair boarding attribute depends on route ID, and route ID depends on stop ID. So there is this transitive dependency. So what we have done is we have uh, split that into two tables, um, and the second table would have a wheelchair boarding and route ID uh, separated out. So that's about it. And uh, and all the other tables that we have used in our project, um, like likely the routes, shapes, um, the trips, and the calendar tables, all the four tables are already in the third normal form. So uh, we are good to go, and we can um, start writing queries with it. So um, I'll just give it over to Iti Chopra, 
Thank you. After normalization, here we have the relational diagram for the normalized schema. As Archana and Dharmi rightly said, we have our clients tables of uh, our routes, stops, wheelchair, trips, shapes, calendar, stop times, as well as our scheduled trips. So how uh, we have uh, relationalized uh, the whole schema here is that uh, the routes have specific shapes, they form specific shapes basically which uh, where the shapes can be identified with their unique shape ID. Uh, the shapes are specifically traced with their latitude and longitude which forms part of the map in real time. And uh, the shapes can have multiple routes but a route is uh, formed, from, formed for only one and only one shape. So this is the relation between our routes and shapes. Similarly considering routes, they have multiple stops and the stops is identified by its own unique stop ID. Uh, and then the stop is in further having, I mean, we have taken the facility of having a wheelchair possible in either of the stops. So this is an optional and a mandatory relationship between stops and wheelchair where the wheelchair again is identified by the unique root ID which goes to its parent table. Coming to trips. Trips, basically trips include stop times. A trip can have multiple stop times. And uh, here the stop time is again identified with a unique composite primary key of trip ID, arrive time, as well as stop ID together. So a trip has multiple stop times, but stop times have, I mean, relate to just one of their parent trips. And uh, coming to trips and calendar, the trips run on specific days of the week. That is, <coughs> a calendar, I mean, the week can have multiple trips. Uh, depending on your day, we are providing service. Therefore, it's identified by its unique service ID. And it also has its own specific start date as well as end date. And uh, finally, each stop time has its own scheduled trip. So, which is again related to the trip ID, which forms as a foreign key with the parent table of trip. So, this is again a mandatory relationship between stop times and, sch and scheduled trip. Going over to our queries and research problem, I'm handing it over to Kausalya hereafter. Uh, thanks, Iti. So, uh, we've seen a lot of tables so far, trips, stops, stop times. So, how are we going to work with it? So, we just came up with a couple of simple queries. So, the main idea that we want to work with is pick up the timestamp that's there in the table and then use that timestamp to put a particular set of ranges, to put a particular set of dates and figure out what are the trips running, what are the routes running. So, I think that's the first query. So, you, you put a particular time range and you see what are the list of trips that are actually running within this range. Say, sometime between Jan 1st to December 30th, find the list of all trip IDs. That would be one simple query that you can figure out. Another thing is, if you want to use your calendar to figure out on which particular days some particular routes are active, we use the service ID in the calendar. So, for example, say, find out the list of trains that are, that are running on Wednesdays and Thursdays alone. So you check where the values are 1 for Wednesdays and Thursdays and 0 for others. Pick that unique service ID and map it to stops, routes and stop times to pick up the list of routes. Uh, the third would be the most frequented uh, trips. So for which we will actually use an aggregate function to find uh, the list of trip IDs per route and then fix the maximum uh, frequented trip. Um, so to use shape, so shape is ideally a location. So what if we want to know the list of routes that are actually there within a particular shape ID? We do have the table for shapes where you have unique 12-digit uh, identifier. So you use that and you find the maximum distance that can be traveled within a shape. So it says how big or small the shape is. Um, it's the same thing with respect to a block as well. Uh, and you also do it for the wheelchair access. Coming to our research problem, so our idea is to go somewhere around uh, understanding how the MARTA app usually comes up with the next minimum arrival time. So let's start up with the data set. So we're taking the green line starting from our set is going to consider the position Ridgeland and to go to Ashland, when is the next train coming and when, when is the next minimal time? So we're going with the stop ID. So we're taking Ridgeland from stops table. We're checking the list of trip IDs that are bound to Ashland 63. We're using the stop times to find out the three timestamps. So the next arrival time is 12.39, the minimum one. So as you can see, the system timestamp is 3.57 for the previous day. And then we're going to calculate the minimum time difference between the two. And then the minimum is 8 hours and 44 minutes from 3 o'clock in the morning. So how are we going to take it to the future scope? Use a similar app, something like Marta, extend it from a green line to a couple of other lines. You can also use it for advanced questions like how to optimize the vehicle and also for the transit time efficiency. Thank you.